Joe here with the Portland Seattle Coffee Gear, bringing you part three of our pour over party. Uh, today we're going to discuss what we do, when we do it, and why. So we have our filter and our pour over device of choice. We have our coffee of choice, which I've already ground. I'm um, following that 1 to 16.6 .6 ratio I have talked about many times. Uh, I have 24 grams of ground coffee, which if we multiply that by 16.6 .6 repeating, we end up with 400 grams of water, which will be a 12 ounce mug of coffee. Uh, at the end of the day, after my coffee absorbs everything, it's really 11 ounces, but that just leaves room for cream and sugar if you're that kind of person. So first things first, we are going to rinse our filter and preheat our brewing system. The reason why we do this is because paper dust is a thing, uh, especially with paper filters. Uh, it sits on a truck from, I believe it's Massachusetts in this instance, travels across the country to Seattle and then travels down to me the entire time my Chemex filter is sitting with a hundred of its best, well 99 of its best friends just rubbing against each other having a good old party and part of that party is paper dust so we're just going to rinse that through and then even out the temperature of our brewing vessel so that we have as much thermal stability as possible. Uh, thermal stability is really important in coffee brewing unless you you go really far. So like if I'm brewing over ice, that's actually pretty okay for most things. If I have a cold vessel, I can manipulate the flavor of my coffee in a way that is not desirable. So little rinse, little twirl for preheating. If this were a mug, I'd do the same thing. Just be very careful so I don't burn my hand. Uh, feeling it, it's like, oh, hey, yeah, that's warm. That's better than the cold vessel that it was before. Dump that out, add your coffee. I have talked about a coffee manipulation tool before in the past. If you're making coffee for friends and family, use a spoon. If it's for yourself, you know where your, pink, your pinky has been. So feel free to use that. Make that little well in the middle. Zero out your scale, that's really important. Uh, if you accidentally don't zero out your scale and you just start pouring water willy-nilly. It's like, hey, I don't know how much my Chemex actually weighs. Plus there's the water the filter absorbed and the coffee, I don't know where I'm starting. So by zeroing out your scale, you end up with a blank slate. Part of that recipe I have talked about in the past, be it when Gail was here last and we chatted about pour over at the bar or in the previous videos is two and a half to three and a half minutes. That's the whole point of this. This is why we dial in our grinder, why we have scales with clocks built into them. Uh, it's to make sure that we can follow a recipe and reproduce results. So I've ground my coffee to what I think is going to be right. Uh, now I'm going to pour my water. I start with a 30 second bloom. Uh, and part of that is the second my water touches my coffee, my timer starts. I'm not pouring my bloom waiting for a happy birthday and then starting, it's all one and the same. I like to bloom my coffee with around the same amount of water that I use, or the same amount of water to coffee that I have. Uh, so 24 to 50 grams, enough to allow my coffee to absorb moisture, release carbon dioxide, and more evenly attain its saturation and solubility point. That just sets me up for success later. After my 30 second bloom, I add my water. And the way I add my water is I go in just sort of like a clover shaped spiral around until I break apart the crust of my bloom. And then I try to use the water to sort of add some motion to the outside occasionally going into the middle to get rid of the coffee that's floating on top uh, that my vortex is segregating. And I pour around 300 grams in that first minute. Uh, I don't want to dump all of my coffee in there uh, because I am of the camp that an even coffee bed is better than just dumping everything and letting it all extract through. I don't know why. I think I do this because it makes me feel better about myself. Uh, versus just, you know, pour and go. 
either method is valid. There are tons of people who say one thing works and the other doesn't. Become one of them. Talk about it on the internet in the comments. We love people like you. While I just wait for it to extract, uh, pay attention. My flow rate dictates how much water I need to pour. So I'm at a minute and 42 seconds. I don't have that much water left. At this point, I feel comfortable adding the rest of my water and just letting it extract for the next minute and 30 to minute and 40 seconds. Uh, I'm stopping at 400. And if I did my job right, somewhere between two and a half minutes and three and a half minutes, I have my cup of coffee. At times like this, I like to sit back and contemplate the deeper secrets of life, the meaning of a full moon, long walks on the beach, coffee in general. It's a good time, especially in the morning when it's like 5 AM, the cat's asleep snoring on the couch. It's just a good moment for yourself. Coffee should be about anticipation. Uh, it's a joyful experience, at least for me. It's a meditation to start my day, uh, which is why I drink coffee the way I do. And you just sit and watch, stare longingly into a YouTuber's eyes, and wait. Two minutes and 50 seconds, we are slowly moving through our water in our filter. What happens is, as I'm pouring, I'm adding agitation to the system, which is allowing me to break apart some of my coffee on a more microscopic scale clogging some of those pores, which is why you want a slightly coarser grind than the whole of your filter, so that you can restrict flow accordingly. If you like keep on pouring lots and lots of little pores, you might end up breaking apart that coffee too much, making smaller and smaller pegs to fill those holes, clogging the system entirely, restricting your flow. A really good brewed cup of coffee, you know, like that last drip happens at 3.30. If you have a little bit of water left over in the system at the end, that's A-OK. -okay. I just have, you know, smidgen left on top of the grounds bed. Pull it and dump. I'm left with 297 grams of brewed water, which is, gosh darn, close enough for me. The last part is to actually enjoy what you are anticipating. Sit back, relax, maybe wake the cat up so it stops snoring. That is very hot and delicious. Cheers.